Welcome back to Dan91's Garage. So after last week's successful test start with the DIY turbo kit that I've made for the Starlet, I figured it was about time we fitted an air filter and a turbo intake pipe. Let's get on with this guys, see you in a sec. So all the bits have arrived to do the air filter for the turbo. Now before we get started, I just wanted to have a quick chat about air filters in general. So starting off with, first things first, when it comes to air filters, you want to get the biggest air filter you can that will still fit in the engine bay. So obviously the larger the amount of surface area that the filter has, the less resistance it's going to have when it's trying to draw air through it. Also the shape of the filter is important. So shorter, wider filters have less resistance than long, thin filters. So once you've chosen the size and shape of your filter, you then need to choose what material it's going to be made from. So K&N are obviously famous for their cotton gauze ones. So it's a cotton gauze material with a light oil on it, and that oil obviously helps retain some of the dirt as it's passing through. You've then got your sponge or foam filters, and then you can go down to a stainless steel mesh if you want to. So the trade-off is between how much resistance there is to the air trying to pass through the filter versus how well it actually filters. So if we're talking about the best media, it's the cotton gauze with oil. That retains down to the smaller particles. Then next up is the foam that obviously is slightly more open as far as a media goes and then you've got the stainless steel mesh which is quite open then you also have to consider the base of the filter quite a few of them are just flat rubber bases but it's best practice at some point in the system to have a bell mouth which is also known as a trumpet or a velocity stack in some countries so you'll notice on some filters like from ram air they have a spun aluminium base to the filter which basically includes a bell mouth into the intake system for you. The only drawback with that is it also adds quite a lot of length to the filter, because obviously filters that just have a flat base with a flange on them, they're actually sort of like 40 or 50 mil shorter. So again, space may be an issue with that, which comes onto what I've bought. So we've got a K&M filter. It's the RU2420. It is. Straight sided round, so obviously round top and bottom. Five inch diameter on the top, five inch diameter on the base, three inch or 76 mil inlet diameter for the neck and three inches high. So 76, 125 and 76 mil intake. So the turbo intake pipe is 57 mil internal diameter. What I've done is I trimmed it down to the absolute minimum of straight that will still obviously bolt onto the turbo and then onto our next piece, which is gonna be this. So obviously that's 57 mil and the filter is 76 mil. So we needed some sort of transition between the two. This is a stainless steel exhaust reducer that's custom made from eBay. You basically tell them what size you want on the small end and the big end, either outside or internal diameter, whichever one you want, um, and they just make it for you. So it's pretty good, good quality. Stainless so I don't have to paint it or anything, but obviously it is a bit too long. So what I'm going to do is cut this down to the absolute minimum to match the pipe. That way we'll have a 57mm pipe here going up to 76. We have an increase in size there, and that happens in the space of about sort of 15 to 20 mil. The turbo intake pipe will be drawing from this diameter and this area rather than a pipe this size. So the whole point in this exercise is it's basically all about increasing the efficiency of the turbocharged system. And obviously, if we have a pressure drop upstream of the turbo, then the turbo has to work harder to put the required amount of boost into the manifold. So for example, if we get a two PSI drop because of the resistance of the filter, plus another two PSI drop because of the resistance going through the pipework and the intercooler, for example, and we only want seven PSI in the manifold, the turbo obviously has to produce 7 psi for the manifold plus the 4 psi to get it there in the first place. So the turbo is going to be working at 11 psi just to give us our 7 that we require in the manifold. So yeah, we'll just give it a quick measure up in the bag. So on the internal flange here, obviously 76 across, there is a little, there is a little step at the end that obviously stops you shoving the pipe too far into it because obviously if you shove the pipe too far up, for example, it's going to be a lot harder for the air to actually be drawn in because I, I believe you'll be effectively reducing the amount of area you could use because it's not going to suck down here, then up, then over, then in, is it? So it's got a little step there to stop you shoving it in too far. And if we measure that up, 
comes to about 16 mil. So we need 16 mil on the big end and about 20 odd mil on the short end. So I'll go chop that up. There it is all shortened up. So we've got about 20 mil left here and about the same on this flange as well. Obviously we've got the curved section here, so I just need to keep a bit of flat, but there we go. So we'll just pop him in there. Try and straighten it up obviously, because they can sit in there a bit funny. So I think I'll put the Jubilee clip on there. Probably the best place to access it is actually around the back this time because it's going to be twisted a little bit back towards the engine. So just tying that on there quickly. Sorted, so he's not coming off. The last thing we want is that to pop off and uh, filter drops out and we run it over. So we'll wang that one down as hard as we dare. It's only under vacuum, so that's cool. There we are, all sorted, ready to go on. So it's easier to assemble it off the car and then just do up this one Jubilee clip from the top because the access is easy, obviously, when you get into the uh, inlet for the compressor housing. So yeah, that's what she looks like. Actually quite impressed, it's quite a nice, neat little solution that I do like that. So there we go, we'll get it on the car. I did have a quick look through this and uh, I keep thinking to myself, do I need to sort of keep inspecting these things if they're brand new? And sure enough, when I, and I did have a quick look in here before I put it on and I managed to find three small pieces of rubber from the molding process and a piece of wire from this mesh just sort of roaming around in there. So I'm glad I did that. And after I'd assembled it, I also sort of put the hoover on this end, held it like that. So it's kind of sucked out anything from inside that would have been in there. But there you go. You don't expect that from a brand new thing. So three, two, one, snappy snap. We'll chuck this on the car. There you go. Quite easy to fit. Dropping it in from the bottom, we won't go in through the top, obviously, so that's in there now. Access to the Jubilee clip from the top and a good sort of 15 mil clear of this pipe and about the same clear to the back of the engine. It is going to move about and wibble a bit when it goes down the road and go over bumps and stuff, but thankfully this pipe, which is actually from Stony Racing, um, it's very thick for its size. It's a good sort of five and a half to six mil thick. Um, that was it's quite a stout pipe and obviously I've cut the rubber down as short as possible so yeah he's on there we'll have a little quick skirt underneath and that's the sort of clearance we got so yeah not too bad these cars aren't exactly the most roomy of vehicles and I've certainly made the best of the space available so I could have gone for a longer filter down here perhaps with a bit more of a taper on it but this one should be plenty big enough for the uh intended power output of this thing so yeah and the good thing is it's all well within the confines of this and obviously the longer this gets the further down it goes and the closer we get to sort of puddles and things we might end up driving through in the lovely english summer so yeah there we go so now that's back on we can start looking at the under trays i do want to put the under trays or splash guards back on not only to protect the air filter from sort of puddles and dirt and grit and crap being thrown up it obviously keeps the engine bay a bit cleaner as well but also it's going to do sort of something minor for aerodynamics as well to to sort of help direct the air under the car i guess if i can get them back on i want to so what i'll do is we'll line up the front holes back in the cross member then obviously this side these are quite flexible and they do sort of pull up and bend into position but it looks like we're just gonna have to sort of notch out this corner basically so i'll probably end up going across here it's just a question of how far back so gonna have a little measure up obviously we've got to get up under here again and then take off whatever we need from this corner so so there it is all sorted and back on so trim down this line basically it's the fold line between the sort of flat section and the side vertical section scooped around here as well sort of sanding and using the uh, burr on the die grinder i was using a hole saw originally to sort of make this hole but unfortunately i mean even for plastic this stuff's quite soft and the hole saw bit into it basically and tore off this entire section up to here originally i was just going to put a hole and then sort of cut it this way but unfortunately it did get away from me and uh tore a big chunk out so made myself a little plastic piece little triangle bit and uh, essentially just riveted it back on and just about seeing there this all sorted now rather than having a big hole through the under tray straight out the filter so that's all sorted just in case you're wondering these are the rivets i used they're basically called a uh, 
multi-grip rivet and what they have is they're made of aluminium obviously with a sort of eight mil flange on them i think i've got some larger ones as well with maybe like a 15 mil flange essentially they're 4.8 mil diameter so the idea is that obviously when these pull up the central section collapses down into sort of like a ribbed pattern and that helps swell up into softer materials to stop the materials coming apart but without being so harsh that it just tears through or it basically explodes the materials so yeah you might get away with just a normal aluminium rivet but these multi-grips are very good for soft materials so that's what i used had to buy myself a bit of a uh, upgrade to my riveter because i seem to have lost all the nozzles for my old riveter so yeah this one got this one from screw fixing it was less than 20 quid it's got like, even got like a mandrel catcher as well um, and it does anything up to 6.4 mil rivets so i got up to quarter inch rivets um, and it was perffectly fine to do the 4.8 for the uh, for the under tray so there we go so that's it for this week thanks ever so much for watching take care of yourselves guys and girls and i'll see you on the next episode